doing really well. It's been ages since I've uh, managed to do um, an update for you guys. So I must, must apologise um, for the lack of input and um, catching up with you. And I, I can't even remember how many months this has been. It was not my intention to leave it quite so long because today I think, well, it's the 15th of April, which is actually Good Friday here in the UK. So it's our long Easter weekend. So I thought, right, I'll, I'll jump on um, and, and try and get something filmed for you. I've got a busy couple of days ahead. So this was probably gonna be the only time I've got to do it. I've um, I've got a friend coming to um, to stay tomorrow. Um, she's um, one of the people who I met on the, the bike ride last year. So we're going out for a night on the town tomorrow night. So I'm <laughs> just, <laughs> sounds really weird. I'm a little bit nervous actually about that. It's been a very, very long time. Like we're talking years since I've had like a proper girly night out. So um, looking forward to it, but a little bit a little bit nervous at the same time so um, anyway enough of that I'll get on but honestly there's been so much so much happening um, which has obviously contributed to the fact that I haven't been able to upload anything but I don't really want to get into that too much whilst um, you know I'm, I'm doing a, an update video for you what I thought I would do is I've got a little bit of time off next week which I'm really looking forward to and hopefully I'll get across to the East Coast and take you with me and maybe do like a vlog type video and just sort of fill you in in terms of some of the things that have been happening. Um, most of it health related. I have honestly it's just been a year of it in terms of things that have sort of kicked off and, and gone on with, with my health and luckily everything is now fine um, so I just feel as though I've sort of been put through the ringer a little bit with that then Daisy hasn't been so good thankfully she's now doing well but obviously I'll tell you about that and then there's just so much going on um, with working environments stuff I'm thinking of, of starting to do um, different avenues and opportunities that are coming up in various different parts of my career and sort of ambitions and oh it was just honestly there, there's so much so I just feel right now that my uh, head is spinning but um, I really did want to come on and do an update for you now there has been stitching um, not a lot but there is plenty to show you to warrant doing an upload video but I just because of everything that's going on right now I'm not sure how much time I'm going to be able to get to commit into stitching over the next few months or so but what I thought I would do at least is if I don't have a lot to show you I can always do the vlogs and the stitching um, progress days with you you know the stuff that I've done in the past so I'm not going to fall off the face of the earth again um, but um, that being said uh, shall we have a look at some progress so first up <laughs> these are not words that often come out of my mouth <laughs> I have a finish so I um, actually it was really funny because when I was stitching this I was just kind of in a bit of a zone watching something on TV I can't remember what I was watching it was um, towards the back end or oh, the early part of this year can't remember and I was just sort of busy away sort of stitching marking off on the pattern as I went and I actually realized I'd finished without even realized right realizing at the time I had but it's um, Home of a Needleworker by Home of a Needleworker 2 actually by Country Cottage Needleworks and um, as you can see I have finally a finish. So I stitched this in the coal for threads and I'm trying to think what they were that I stitched it in. Can't quite remember but I will obviously put the name on the screen for you. Um, but yeah really happy with how it worked out and I just grabbed an old piece of sort of antique linen and stitched it on it. So it's come out at 16 counted. It's 32 counts obviously two over two, uh, two over two so it's come out 16 count um really straightforward nice little stitch so obviously hopefully it won't end up in my drawer of shame with all of the other things that are not framed but i would um i'd actually like to get that one framed and on the wall i think it's really cute so um finally we have a finish so next up we almost have a finish now this is something that's been lingering on 
like, like most of my things, a lot longer than it really should have been. So this is um, Mirabilia's Royal Games 1. So you've got the Queen of Hearts and the Queen of Spades. Um, this is stitched on um, 32 count opalescent oatmeal fabric and this was hand dyed by Kate at Sparkly's and it's just like a really it, it there doesn't really look as if there's any hand dyed um, nature to it because obviously it's really really light but I just wanted it to resemble a plain card and I know I've said this multiple times so obviously it's stitched two over two comes out at 16 count um, which is standard DMC threads and like every mirror that you ever show you can never see how lovely it is and obviously all the beading on it never shows up but I remember last time and I will put the picture in of where I was with it I hadn't put all the border in on this bottom part and the Queen of Spades was still fairly lacking in terms of how she was but there is a tiny tiny bit and I'm talking a few stitches there's a bit of beading to go on in terms of the heart a couple of skin and flesh tones a little bit of beading on the um, Queen of Spades herself but so little in terms of actually getting this finished so a couple of nights and this would be done so hopefully by the time I come back and see you again this will be um, a finish and I do have already the pattern for the Royal Games 2 part of it so I think most of the um, DMC colours are very similar because obviously it's the sister piece to it so I shouldn't have to um, purchase any more DMC threads hopefully in order to be able to stitch the other one and uh, hopefully it'll uh, actually stitch up a little bit faster. <laughs> so if we stay on the theme of Mirabilia's next up I've got my Persephone now this think off the top of my head I have been stitching since 2017 and I remember starting this when I was off work not very well um, at the time and oh God, I, still, I can't believe it's not done you know but it just takes so much time so I will put in a picture of where I was before um, but here she is now in all of her glory and, and they are beautiful they really are but what has taken a chunk of time is the the border as, as you can see now I did decide to stitch the border because you can actually do this without but obviously it's so effective um, it's stitched in um, oh, it's like a variegated thread and then there's a lot of beading on there and I was thinking at the time that I wouldn't do the beading element of it. it's Karen Water Lilies this uh, this border the variegated element of it and then sort of did it and then there's there's beads to be added and I was thinking do I put the beads on oh, I don't want to do the beads um, I'm so glad I did because the the beading elements on it just look fab and again I know you won't be able to see I'm just seeing if I can pick up the light on it but I know it won't the other thing that's taking quite a bit of time with her as well is I'm stitching her skin sort of one over one one strand back stitch kind of petite point style and I think I've done a video somewhere and, and it'll be my playlist of, of this style of stitching for skin and you you're obviously making four stitches for every standard cross stitch you would do so it does take a bit of time bit of effort with counting and such like but it, it really does look effective and really smooths it out so glad I've done it but obviously I've got an entire arm to finish here I have made a start on it and that's obviously where I'll pick up again but yeah the border was a fair bit of work but she's coming along um, I think there's obviously her arm to do and then just a general bit of beading and she's not she's not a million miles away again I have to say but you know it's like it's like everything it's just finding the time to sit down and do them isn't it but she is stitched on another hand dyed fabric by Kate at Sparkly's this is opalescent slightly nutty it's it's called and uh, again 32 count coming out at 16 count two over two and um, it's just got this really subtle sort of variegation it reminds me of, of like a really pale strawberry ice cream <laughs> I think it's quite pretty I just didn't want to do too much in terms of hand dyed but I just wanted a little bit something a little bit different I did start to stitch her on it was the recommended linen that comes with the pattern I think it's a fabric 
permin linen it is and it's a, a sh the shared sand and I actually started to stitch this when I um, first got the pattern on that sand fabric and I just didn't like it it was just seemed too dark for the actual pattern itself so obviously went on and had a look at what might actually go um, with it and decided on this particular fabric and I'm so glad I did it looks it looks really effective um, with just like the subtle opalescent um, element of it. it's not too much it just really does add to the actual overall finish then we have my autumn at Hawker and Hollow monster <laughs> this, this where am I now not far off finishing block seven finally let me um I'm probably gonna have to stand with this you can see how long it's gonna be and obviously there's 12 blocks to this so overall it works out as roughly four foot long when it's finally finished so this is where I am and I've just literally started this block when you when you last saw it so it's it's well on the way oh Daisy's just moved behind me <laughs> I thought she might have made an appearance but she quite she hasn't quite yet maybe she will in a bit but uh, yeah as I said this is going to work out about four foot long so I am stitching this uh, now I got this from so and so which no longer is it exists in the UK and this is it's like a like a front printed um kind of linen effect fabric it's more it's more of an even weave though and it's 40 count so I'm stitching this one over one no one over two which brings it out at 20 count and I chose the NPI silks to stitch the, this in which are lovely but incredibly expensive it looks great but I don't ever think I would do it again just because of the expense it's it's ridiculous but again it just looks so effective and I, and I do like the colours because they do have a really sort of muted effect um, that it looks very I don't know it's like antiquated in a way in terms of the colouring on it and I do I think it's I think it's really pretty but it's coming together it's just a nice little one to do when you, you don't want to do anything overly complex like one of the heaven and earth designs and you know you can just sort of line and line and line because it's quite blocky so I do I do like it for that reason um, so this is where I am with that piece at the moment so the next three are my heaven and earth designs that I'll just grab for you in a moment so one of them has suffered a little bit in terms of progress but the other two are they've come on quite a lot actually I have made some really decent progress with them so I'll just grab them for you and I'll be right back right the first of the three is my beautiful Chris Ortega steam heart now, I won't put a picture in of where I was last time. Gosh, she's massive, isn't she? I'm trying back up a little bit and I can't get her all in still. She is an absolute monster. <laughs> but I'm stitching her one over one on 25 count. This is definitely an even weave. So, I didn't have her shoulder in last time you saw her. So, this would be the end of one page, roughly. So, I've done... A reasonable amount of the of the next page along so she started to get her shoulder in so still a little bit to do I would say I'm about two-thirds of the way through that page here of um, of work so it's it's coming along I would say I'm roughly hmm or I'm definitely over a quarter of the way I'd say possibly near 30 percent of the way through this maybe even more because obviously it's, oh God, it's so big there's so much background as well to this it, it really is amazing but again this is one that I've been stitching I want to say since about 2017-18 ish and oh, the, the problem with me is you know this and, and many of you are very much the same where other stuff catches my eye and obviously I start it and I do like the bigger full coverage pieces so I don't finish a lot often you know so the fact I had to finish this time was was quite something for me but they are they are amazing but you know if you stitch these how long they take and they're not complicated to stitch it's not difficult it's just the fact that each page is a an accomplishment in itself and when you've got something that's about I don't think she's about 48 pages you know how much work is involved but she's still 
obviously my, my most favourite thing um, when it comes to cross stitch and, and I will finish her one day but I do I do think that because my stitching time this year is going to probably be a little bit more limited certainly for the next few months it's going to be a bit patchy I think something like this just having it on my frame and ready to go so if I get a couple of hours on an evening I can just sit down and pick up the needle and, and do a bit and that's what's happened with one of my other pieces where I have made some decent progress I've just literally left it on the stand and if I've been well enough not too tired and, and in a position where I can do maybe an hour before I go to bed I've done it but um, yeah it has been somewhat limited but that is her coming on but still <laughs> an awful long way to go always always the case with um, with the heaven and earth so my next one and again i've made some decent progress with this so i will put in a picture of where i was before this is my mini winter kiss i'm just about to put it on back to front and, and i think the artist is adele cessna and if it isn't i'll put the right person on but i'm sure it's adele cessna um, again heaven and earth design if i haven't said and this is where I am now. So prior to today, I um, his face is starting to come together now. So I've done some of his his skin and filled out more of his hair than I had before. And obviously this is a top of of her head, as you can as you can see, it's starting to come through. So it's getting there. I think with this one, I was about twenty percent of the way through it when I looked on. Um, Pattern Keeper, which is now the app that I use for all of the full coverage pieces and um, there's some great tutorials online around Pattern Keeper if you haven't used it yet um, for your full coverage. And I know you can use it for other types of cross stitch but I haven't quite got there yet. It's amazing. I, it, honestly, it's been the best thing for me in terms of really speeding up the process of full coverage stitching and as you know, I'm what they refer to as a, a cross-country stitcher. I don't stitch the blocks um, as many people do. I'll obviously select a colour and sort of follow it through. You need to count and make sure you're counting well, but I'll obviously follow a trail of a colour through the pattern and then switch to something else, which is why you know you get this sort of feathering effect as I, as I do it. But I, I find with that, um, I don't get the block lines because if I do tend to stitch a little bit more blocky I can actually see the lines and and it's very hard for a framer to pull those out uh, when they frame them and get the tension right because obviously each square you've you, you stitched as a, as a pattern in its own right so the pattern keeper app has actually really helped that because the previous app I was using I think it was easy pdf um, it would only show you each page individually where the pattern keeper has the entire pattern and you just zoom it in to the part that you want so you don't get like a page end in essence on that pattern you just can follow it through so if you've got a colour and you're working on it and it weaves into the next page you can naturally just follow it so I'm finding that I'm not getting those tension lines from stitching a page in itself or having to flick through a pattern to try and find where the next page is so I can work out where the next colours are. It's it's just helped massively and it's, it's the little things, isn't it, when you're doing something on this type of scale. But this is the mini version, so this isn't the, um, the full size version. I've stitched um, a story keep before and an ornament version of a Heaven and Earth and finished those. I wouldn't take on right now because obviously I've got the Chris Ortega steam heart piece I wouldn't take on another full size heaven and earth at the minute so what I do have here is obviously the mini winter kiss and then I've got um, a sort of star repeat version of the one I'm about to show you now so yeah one big <laughs> heaven and earth is enough for me and I know there's some some of you guys I don't know how you do it who have got you know seven or eight of the big big full coverage ones um you know I'm slow enough uh, I really couldn't um I really couldn't cope with that. I'd never, I'd never get anywhere or see any light at the end of the tunnel. So finally, and the one where I really do feel as though I've made a good amount of progress is my um, Lisa Parker's, this is Rise of the Witches Story Keep. So this is where I've got to and I'll put alongside where I was before. 
So, I had previously, as you can see, all of this top bit done. And I've started to bring in the colours of the cat head. But I've pretty much, and not far off, finished his head. So this is looking fabulous. Um, the cat ones appeal to me. I don't know why I'm really not a cat person as such. I like dogs, as you know, with my little daisy. But I have nothing against cats, but I just think they look so attractive on, on the pictures and the artwork of Lisa Parker that I would happily stitch a whole host of these. I really would. I think they're fab. So I'm over 30% of the way through this now, which is amazing. So this is just stitched on 18 count Ada, two over, two over one. And it's just a little bit bigger, so it's less stress on my eyes. So I find I can I can work at it longer. Obviously, the eyes themselves, oh my goodness. I'm not kidding you. I think there are about 40 different colours of stitches within those eyes. So what I've been doing is just literally doing a bit some, something a bit blocky and then I'll go in and do a couple of the colours in the eyes because you're talking maybe two or three stitches of the same colour. I think I've got about 20 shades of yellow <laughs> that I had to buy to be able to do this and I'm literally using like three or four stitches out of each of those skeins of floss which is bonkers but you know what these patterns are like but the eyes when they're finished will look they'll look absolutely outstanding so I can't wait to see that done so I'm going to take this off because this has been sitting on my frame um, and, and obviously as I've had time here and there I've, I've sort of done an hour or so but I'm going to take it off now and give something else a little bit of love and um, yeah hopefully make some progress elsewhere so that has been my update Daisy's asleep behind me I'm sorry she didn't make an appearance but she will when I do my vlog type update for you so it's nice to see you all I'm sorry again it's been so long and um, won't let it happen again <laughs> I promise but now I'm gonna have to scoot I'm tidy up my house I need to get my spare room all um, all sorted because I've been in there with Daisy there's been me and her in there because it's the warmest bedroom in the house so obviously I'm going to give that up um, to my friend and, and go back into my other main bedroom. So I need to get all of that deferred. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. I will no doubt see you really soon. Take care, guys. Lots of love. Catch you soon. Bye.